Hello everybody, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. I got five crashes to show you guys and things to look out for on the road and things that led up to these accidents, right? The first thing I want to mention is there's a couple different types of drivers out there, all right? There's your highly skilled drivers that really know their cars. They've been in the same car for years. They, they've lived in the same place. They drive the same roads over and over again. These people perhaps do have the ability to drive the roads better than other people based off of experience with their vehicle and the roads. That's just a fact. That's why if you race the same track over and over, you get better and better. Now there's also your average commuter that just knows how to drive. They got a license. They can drive fine. They follow all the road laws. And, and those are the guys you don't really got to watch out for because you know that they're paying attention. They're using their signals every time. They're probably shoulder checking as well. And then you have people that have no idea what they're doing and they're scared to drive. They just hope that they get to A to B and back. They're not paying attention to everybody, right? So if you're watching this, always pretend like you're invisible to other people when you're on the road. Pretend like nobody can, can see you. No one has a clue that you're there. And at any given moment, at any given time, you should always have a, somewhere to go, an escape route, a gap, somewhere to, to put your car in case someone doesn't see you and literally swerves right into you, slams the brakes, cuts you off, doesn't signal and starts coming over into your lane, doesn't yield at a yield, blows a red light. You have to go into this appreciating that I don't condone what these guys are doing and I'm here to offer some education behind why these accidents happened and also some good driving tips like that, you know, pretending like you're invisible to others, nobody can see you and you have to do everything you can to alert other people of what you're doing and you have to know that you might just have anything happen at any time. If you're always ready, you always have a chance of stopping something from happening. So let's look at someone that's not ready, <laughs> alright? So going into this We've got a couple cars, they're cruising and, and they're cutting up, right? This guy here in the front making this lane change into the right, he would have been completely fine had he not whipped his wheel like he was a pirate steering a boat. And what I mean by that is this guy swerves into the right lane and slams the wheel back to the left, which initiates oversteer into the car, and then he starts to slide out. And now he crashes his car, and he puts a bunch of innocent people at risk of their health and safety, and ruins everybody's day, and also almost causes two friends to crash by the cameraman, almost rear-ending the guy in front, which is 100% understandable. This is a situation where all you can do is hit the brakes, alright? There's not much going on around at the same time. There are holes here that you could take. So right there, that's where it happens. And this is the big crash. You know what I'm saying? So this is what happens when you have no idea what you're doing. And you go and try and act like you know what you're doing. This happens, right? It's bad. Innocent civilian. Now you got people running. Obviously they don't want to be a witness. I kind of would also want to mind my own business in that situation. As long as there's other people around. No big deal. But that's what I'm saying, right? So, while this is happening, this other car in the middle lane almost sideswipes this guy in front because he's got to make a reaction too, and he also has nowhere to go. Nobody here has anywhere to go. This is the most unideal situation in an accident where all you can actually do is hit your brakes and hope nothing happens. So, case point. Done. That's over. That's one of those videos. Shout out BreeQ50. Give you a subscribe there and a like. I do watch your content. And, uh, you know what I'm saying? This this isn't good, man. The, the guy in front there, not a good driver. Shouldn't be out here doing this. Should, you know, maybe spend another six months, year in his car, learn it, and live it. So let's move on. So let's go over to Squeeze Benz. Now, this one's going to be real quick because we all know this guy likes the attention. And, uh, you know, you do see him looking around in the videos, making sure he's not going to hit anybody. But he'll also tell everybody he's never Mac, blah, 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 all this type of stuff. But you be the judge. Is this a Mac? Because it sure looks and sounds like it. That car came to a sudden stop with a little quick bang and the shifter. He's got to figure out what's going on with the car. That's a collision. 
I don't know how anybody can say that this was not a collision, right? And the other thing too is, you know, this is what you call clout chasing. You know, it, you throw a cop car in the video and start doing this in front of it, and you look like you're acting hard, bro. Like you're totally a gangster for not caring about the cop. A cop car is empty, bro. It's off. There's not a cop in there, right? So, at the end of the day, that's a Mac. You know, until I'm proven wrong and someone wants to show me that rear end not hitting something, that that's a Mac, bro. And this is a guy that just recently told us, you know, I never Maced. I haven't been in a vehicle that's been Maced. Well, I'm not subscribing to him and I'm not liking that video because he's just lying to us. And it was shortly after that incident of him saying that he's never been in a vehicle that's been Maced and all that stuff and not letting this guy out of the car while he's speeding and everything. Boom. 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 What happened there? L driving, bro. This guy knows his car is not as good as performance as Lamborghini on the brakes. He's following him. There's nowhere to go. Look at behind you, go, bro. Like, there's no nowhere to go. These guys were ripping in the shoulder because they can't make cuts in traffic. And they start making cuts in traffic, someone gets rear-ended. That's really rush hour. Bumper to bumper traffic. Everybody stopped. You're going 100 miles an hour. You better be able to hit the brakes or have that gap I'm talking about where there's a way out. He had no way out here. Locked up the brakes. Pulled to the left of the van or whatever. Gets rear-ended. Nothing he can do. Guy in the Lexus driving too fast. Doesn't know what he's doing. Too much car. Too little driving. You know what I'm saying? So these are things like people could have really gotten hurt here for some clout and some views, right? This is rush hour traffic, man. Look at the wall of traffic behind. Like, this is just ridiculous, right? So let's get into another good example here. Um, what you see here is a Civic, right, in the left lane, ripping up ahead a bit, and he's going to cut off this BMW, and this BMW owner has to be happy at his driving and the vehicle that he has because if this was another type of vehicle, this would have been an accident, now, at the end of the day, the Civic crashes anyways, and the main factor for the Civic crashing here is the speed and the actual performance of the car. You have a fast car with what looks like little performance to the actual base of the car for handling and braking. So let's take a look at what happens here, alright? We're going to watch this. We're going to go down the, down the map here, and Civic is going to cut off this uh, BMW just a little bit. Oh, my bad. I already got to the Mac. Sorry about that. Let's go back a little bit here, and uh, we're going to go to where the Civic actually cuts off this BMW, and uh, the BMW has to do some W driving. It's right here, gets cut off, swerve, come back on the highway, barely missed the guardrail, and now that Civic's going to take off, right? That, that guy's going to move out of there. It's going to move out of there. Oh, the, Civ the Civic was ahead, bro. So I actually got to go back further. That wasn't even the Civic that cut the BMW off. That was just another one of the buddies. The Civic was actually back here. There's the Civic. My bad. So that's the Civic in front of the BMW now. And he's going to take off. He's actually just going to move and get out of there. That's where the BMW got cut off because this guy was, you know, caught in the middle and wanted to catch up with the Civic. My bad. I totally messed that up. I'm not going to re-edit nothing. It's all good. People make mistakes sometimes. That's how we learn from them. Always make sure what you're looking at. But the Civic, I think, just couldn't sh slow down. Not enough not enough braking force on this car. Not enough downforce. You know what I'm saying? That's like a 98 Civic. Looks like it's probably an SI. It's probably boosted or something. Not a big wing on there. Nothing like that to hold the car down. Looks like he's got some rims upgraded on the car and it's lowered. But there's not enough to, to slow this car down at that type of speed. And that's ultimately what led up to this accident happening. And that sucks because that is a really clean, nice Civic. And then we get to this guy. Just keep your eyes on the red BMW the whole entire time here, alright? So this red BMW looks out of place. And we do find out later on that he was at random that was just following. But let's watch this guy. And let's see kind of what he's doing. He looks confused. Doesn't really look like he's sure of where everybody's going or, or where he wants to be on the road and you're gonna see over and over again this guy doesn't leave himself a gap like I talk about and that is ultimately what ends this guy's career for cutting up as well as that 
that in front of the cop thing we're going to see again, right? This, this happens right after the cop pops up in the video. On the bottom camera of the screen on the right side, you will see a cop in the video. And shortly after that, there's a big accident. Right, so let's take a look at the layout of the traffic. You know what I'm saying? There's not really many places to go. Again, we've got super dense traffic, high-performing cars, people trying to be really fast in a, a spot where... You cannot really be fast here. You're very limited where to go. You've got a wall. In my opinion, there you go, guy on the shoulder, right? And in, in my opinion, if you're going to be driving <coughs> like this anyways, why not just take the shoulder? I don't condone this stuff, but I was saying, why not just take the shoulder? If you're going to be cutting in and out, there's the cop, right? So there's the cop. There's the BMW, and right near this black Jeep is when we get this accident. And watch this guy. Not a clue of where his car is on the road. Boom. Now, people are honestly going to blame the other traffic cars for not going the proper speeds in the lanes. That's not their fault. We're, we're back to that conversation now. There's some people that have no idea what they're doing. There's some people that follow all the, the roadways. And there's people that drive fast. You got a guy that's driving fast versus a guy that has no idea what he's doing versus another guy that's trying to be a little bit faster. You have all three types of drivers here and all three types of drivers get hit. Awesome. So that's what these guys are doing behind the scenes and this is what's happening. Right, you guys are sitting here like, oh man, they never mac, dude. He said he never mac. Who cares what he said, bro? You want to say you're not involved in an accident? Okay, awesome. This guy technically isn't involved. But that BMW never would have crashed anyways if you were, weren't with all these random people that were doing all this crazy stuff anyway. Adrenaline is a thing. Triggering is a thing. How many video titles do you see where people go, Oh man, I was just chilling and then this guy passed me and it triggered me and I started driving really, really fast. A lot of them. So... Keep that in mind. If you don't have the experience, you're not ready to predict the elements, you're not ready to take into consideration the scared drivers, the people who have no idea what they're doing, and the wide range of drivers that you're going to deal with, as well as taking your defensive driving into account and always leaving yourself some type of hole, enough room to brake, not bumper bullying people and things like that, you're going to have a better chance of not crashing your car like everybody in this video. Whether you guys think it was their fault, not their fault, they were involved or not, we can all agree that everybody in the video got their car hit. A car or more in every video got hit and it wouldn't have happened if they weren't doing this stuff with all of these other people in these road conditions with this much traffic. That's a simple fact. Have a good day everybody. Take care. And I just wanted to point that all out there and make it known that you can be a safe, fast driver without doing a bunch of crazy stuff like this and having all of these bad accidents and potentially ruining your life. Take care, guys.